Good afternoon, welcome to our homestead. It is still winter time here in East Texas, and one of the most nutritious things that you can feed your livestock is fodder. And fodder is just a sprouted grain, either wheat, barley, or oats. Today we're gonna to talk about what we are sprouting, how long it takes to sprout it, exactly how much to give your chickens, and how to rotate it. Let's get going. A few years ago, we built this fodder system and it works beautifully. If you want to know the step-by-step -step process on how we built this thing, click on this video right here. Let's first talk about what we are sprouting. For us, we tried to sprout oats and wheat, and by far the easiest one is wheat. Now, I've heard from some other people who grow fodder that barley is pretty easy, but the wheat for us works perfect, so I'm not gonna change anything right now unless I can't get the wheat. We use these 10 by 20 grow trays with some holes poked in the edge. They're set at an angle, and then I have a watering system that waters them twice a day for about five minutes each time. And that's been plenty of moisture to get these growing and to keep them growing really well. So on our system, you can see that I've got six trays set up, and that's plenty for our small homestead. And for our flock of chickens, we have 14 chickens. Of course, if you are gonna feed this to your sheep and to your pigs and potentially even your cows or a bigger flock, you're gonna need a much larger operation than this, but this keeps everything for our small flock just perfectly balanced. Let me show you how much grain we use and how many trays that will cover, and then I'll talk about the rotation. So to fill three of our 10 by 20 grow trays with enough grain to grow fodder properly, we need about two and a half of these cups. Each one of these cups is 32 ounces, and I'm going to get a weight for you on the amount of grain. So one of my cups is one pound, five ounces. So for the total for my three grow trays, I need three pounds, two ounces. You can just round that down to three pounds, so about one pound of grain for every tray. Our grain is going to go in our soaking bucket. We're gonna cover this with water and soak it for 12 to 24 hours. Remember to just put enough water in here to cover the grain. Like I said, the minimum you want your grains to soak for is 12 hours. We usually go 24, but since it was Sabbath yesterday, we went 48. Today is 48, and you can see that we've got actually some of the grains sprouting already in the water. So I need to drain this off and get these in our uh, grow trays. You can see the little white sprout already coming out of these, even though they were sitting in the water. If you didn't see the bucket design before, go back and watch the other video, but essentially you just pull this top bucket out and the water is gonna drain out below. If for some reason you need to leave the grains soak for more than 48 hours, you really need to change the water out. So no matter what you do, at the end of that 48 hours, change that water and get it out of there, get some fresh clean water in there or get the grains into your grow trays. So what we're gonna do is just scoop out the wet grains and layer about a half inch in the bottom of each tray. Do your best to even everything out so it's about the same thickness throughout the tray. That's gonna help things grow nice and evenly. As you can see at the edge of the tray where the drain holes are, I have not put any grain. And that's because I don't want the root mat that will develop when all these grains sprout to clog up those drain holes. Because if it does, too much water is going to sit on our grain and it is going to rot and mold. So make sure you are careful about keeping that root mat away from the edge. Now you can see the contrast of our new grains and our five day old grains. This is what five day old looks like if you've got a little bit cooler temperatures like we do here in the barn. This is not a heated conditioned space, so they are going to grow a little bit slower. So this process will also be dependent on the temperature at which you're growing these. Now I can put a heat bulb above these and get them going a little quicker, but I'm not gonna do that at this point. So for our flock, we have three trays 
at five day intervals. And that keeps them fed constantly with the amount of fodder that is right for them. Now, there's a lot of debate on how much fodder is right for a chicken. And it's dependent on body weight, but they usually say between two and 4% body weight. So for our mixed flock, that's gonna be a little difficult to calculate, but our leghorns are about four pounds each, our barred rocks are about eight pounds each. So we just split the difference at six pounds. So at six pounds body weight, 4% is about a quarter pound of fodder per day. But you will have to figure out the specific math for your flock or your herd if you're feeding it to sheep or goats or whatever it is. You're gonna have to do all the math and get that all calculated for what works best for you. Now I can start feeding this today if I wanted to, even at this early stage, because they have all sprouted there's not a lot of greenery to it, but the amount of nutrients that are contained within those sprouted grains is, I think, on the order of five or six times higher than a regular grain. And as I start to feed the first tray, which has just sprouted out, it's about an inch long, give or take, the other trays will start to catch up to that and I can continually rotate through everything. Cool coincidence, I was out here making the video and the timer went off to water these, so they are getting watered right now. You can see the water coming out of these button drippers here at the top, and there is an 800 gallon per hour submersible pump and a tote here at the bottom, and you can check that out on that other video, as I said, and it's just circulating the water around. Then everything drops into this little gutter that I put here falls down into our pipe, back into our tote, and it's recirculated by that pump. I've set the timer on the pump to be on for five minutes, two times per day. You can see the beautiful root mat that is developed on this tray right here, and that will get even thicker over the next two days. There is a little bit of a debate about when to feed the fodder to your chickens, at what stage. The grass has to be six inches tall, the grass has to be four inches tall, the grass has to just be sprouting. Well, as soon as the grain sprouts, those nutrients increase. And you don't really wanna waste it at that point, per se, like the ones we just put in here are already sprouted. You can see that little white tail coming out of the, uh, I think it's the endosperm. But at the point which these are at, you can start to feed it to your flock if they need some nutrition. Now they're not gonna get that dose of greenery that they also need. So you do need to let some go to a taller stage, probably maybe three to four inches tall. Let's give ours a little treat right now. Come on. Now I've taken about a quarter of a tray out for them to eat. That's gonna be a perfect nutrient-dense snack for them today. If you have any questions about making fodder for your chickens, please leave them for me in the comments section below the video. Now click on this video right here, which is where we talk about an amazing nesting box that saved our eggs from being pecked. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.